Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to 117. Here again on Monday, the 18th of January 2021. My name is Matt. It's great that you can be here along for the journey here at 117 on All We Can's Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, wherever you're joining us here from today. Welcome to all of you watching here live. You're watching on replay. Do make sure you drop us a comment. We'd love to be able to uh, hold together with you as well. But welcome to 117, one and all. It's good to have you with us. Um, let us know where you're coming from today in the comment section as ever. It's good to see familiar and new faces as well joining us for our conversation today. Good to see you, Christine from Andover. Hope you're keeping well. Colin, as ever, good afternoon to you. Uh, and a pleasant day in Scarborough. Brilliant. That's what we like to hear. Uh, and unfortunately, just started to rain in Plymouth. But it's good to have you, Joyce, as well. Good afternoon to you, Nigel. Hope you're doing well as well. Janet, and also to you, Diane, as well, in the comments. Good afternoon to all of you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, those of you who watched maybe 117 for the very first time and thinking, what is 117? Well, we began it back in the end of March of 2020 when the first lockdown was announced here in the United Kingdom. And as, an all, as a movement here at All We Can, as an organisation, we want to help and be holding together with all of you and our partners around the world. We were inspired uh, actually by Colossians 117, in which we find in Christ all things hold it together. So we're continuing uh, in that spirit of 117 to hold together at this moment. So this is your opportunity to let us know uh, how you're doing and how we can continue to hold together as well with you. But we're really happy that you're uh, with us today. Good afternoon to, from Colombia. Fantastic. See, this is a worldwide gathering here as well. And it's great to have so many of you along for the journey as well. But did you hear that? Yes, someone was at the door, and it was, in fact, Dr. Chris Teeling. How are you? Doing really well. Thank you for inviting me on. Fantastic. It is so good to have you here with us uh, live at 117. And uh, I want to encourage everyone in 117, you're in the comment section. Maybe you want to drop uh, Chris a big hello, your first time here at 117. But greetings to you. It's good to have you with us. Are you keeping well? Yeah, pretty well. I mean, it's full on with the kids, uh, homeschooling. You know it well. Uh, yeah. So we're very busy and I'm working from from home. It looks like there's there's a lot of space maybe behind me, but I can touch my bookshelf by just moving my hand back here. And it's actually a broom cupboard here. Wow. So this, this is where I live in this little room at the moment. And that's not the nicest experience, honestly. But but then again, I don't have to travel so far and everywhere, and I get to spend a lot of time with the family, so that's a good thing too. Exactly, and maybe one day, uh, you know, uh, my bookcase might look quite as full as yours. Uh, oh yeah, a yeah. More sparse, but uh, well, I'll get there. I'll get there in the end. But Chris, um, you were at the door today. You know, we were running a joke here at one seventeen is about uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a very persistent door uh, postman wanted to try to uh, enter in one of our live broadcasts because he wanted to um, deliver a parcel. So now we have this. Uh, game who's at the door and you're here today having a conversation with us but to get to know you a little bit better we also have a little bit of introduction game so it's called all the questions you can Chris um, and so are you ready to play all the questions you can oh I think so I don't want to incriminate myself but I think so okay fantastic just to remind you and let everyone know you're watching here live as well uh, we do actually have a leaderboard uh, I have to let you know so currently on the top of the leaderboard Chris is my daughter <laughs> Uh, she had 18, um, so don't feel too much pressure. If you do beat her, uh, she will have to be coming back on here soon to beat the score again. We've got Hannah Brown from JPIT, of course, and Ali Johnson, who was on last week as well, who's the digital evangelist for the Methodist Church. He got 16. So you've got some quite high scores there, Chris. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to set a I'm going to set a timer on my phone, okay, um, and then that will give us an opportunity to be able to have 90 seconds on the clock to answer as many questions as you can. And I'm going to try and go as fast as I can for the questions as well because I've been told I need to go faster as well. So are you ready, Chris? Okay, let's do it. Okay, ready? Let's go. Let's start. 
Question number one. What is your name? Chris. Tilly. Uh, where were you? <laughs> Great. Where were you born? South Africa. Johannesburg. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, what's your favourite movie? Oh, no. I'm already losing, aren't I? Oh, oh right. man. Uh, uh, liar, liar. Let's go with that one. Okay. Favourite Bible character? Uh, Paul. Oh, got to be. Uh, pineapple on pizza? No. Oh, Mac or, uh, Mac or PC? PC. Uh, uh, Favourite book? Oh, the, the Bible. I've got, no, uh, come on. I'm not going to be that holy. Favourite favorite <laughs> book? I don't know. The Deliverance of God by, by Douglas Campbell. Awesome. Uh, the the favourite thing you've written? <sighs> Paul the Trinitarian, an essay. Fantastic. Tea, coffee or hot chocolate? Coffee. What's the best thing to happen on Zoom that you've seen? Uh, always the leave button. <laughs> favourite pair of shoes? Uh, slippers. Uh, where are you now? In my office at home. Uh, would you rather go to the beach or a mountains for a holiday? Beach. Okay. Um, summer or winter? Summer. Jammy Dodgers or custard creams? Custard creams. Uh, hymns or modern worship songs? Oh, hymns. I'll start so I'll finish. Oh, hymns, hymns. Hymns. Hymn. Oh, fantastic. Well, Chris, you, you did get off to a bit of a slow start, I have to say. But you did get 16. So they are, you, are, you are tied with Ali Johnson with that. So well done. That was I was a bit worried for you at the beginning, I have to say, uh, because we did get up to a bit of a rocky start with the, with the, with the movie question. But you yeah, I up. couldn't think of a single movie for a minute there. It was just, <laughs> my mind went blank. It, it, it does get tricky, especially when you're under pressure as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you know, you, you're sometimes, you know, especially when you haven't been prepped either, what those questions are going to be. Um, it can be a little bit tricky as well. But lots of people in the comment section, Chris, saying hello to you, just to let you know. Gerald, well. excellent. Say hello to you. Um, you man. And uh, Colin saying greetings to you as oh, well. Um, and uh, Christine as well. Um, my grandson is at his first year at Melitis. There we go. And well, <laughs> brilliant stuff. And Patrick and Lucy and uh, as well. And yes, Janet, you're right. My daughter is still unbeaten. She's going to be happy, Chris, I have to say. So you did make my daughter happy. Oh, fair uh, she won't have been beaten. So don't worry. 16 is a very good score. Um, but some of those questions that we asked you, you know, you said um, you said your favorite character in the Bible was Paul. Um, tell us a little bit about kind of your backstory. We introduced you, of course, your role at St. Melitus uh, as well. But you know, tell us a little bit of, in particular of your, uh, I would say, not say fascination, but your interest in the character of, of who Paul is as well. Where did oh, that kind of begin? And um... yeah. Well, I've always been interested in, you know, the, the big questions about Paul, justification by faith, what does that mean? But it wasn't until I began my PhD, actually, that I really mm. started to drill down into the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> my questions have always been Christological. You know, who is Jesus? That's been the main question that's always driven me. Yes. And when I was writing my PhD, I realized I needed to narrow down I couldn't just do, you know, who is Jesus across the New Testament and all of the rest of it. So I ended up looking at the Apostle Paul because he gave us a mirror, a, a window, sorry, into the very, very earliest Christians and what they believe. Because Paul wrote his letters decades before even the Synoptic Gospels came on the scene. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously, uh, as I introduced at the beginning, you know, we've kind of drawn inspiration, you know, just like you said, you know, in your journey with faith and of the Bible, uh, we've drawn inspiration here at 117 from some of Paul's writings of Colossians, of course, Colossians 117, where we <coughs> read again, in Christ, all things hold together. And that's kind of been our kind of foundation of kind of what we've been doing ever since, since the, the tail end of March of last year. Um, and it's been a constant inspiration for us uh, moving forward as well. And, and I guess, you know, kind of another leading question to begin with, you know, Chris, you know, is if Paul was, to, and this is one of the questions I was going to ask you on the sheet here, but we didn't quite get to it. If Paul was to walk into a room today, um, what would you think his first words would be? Me <laughs> uh, and may it never be, uh, or hell no to use, I don't know. Um, Paul, <laughs> Paul was, a, he could be a little bit obnoxious sometimes. So I think it depends what mood you got him in. Mm. But the key to understanding Paul 
is that he is always going to be talking about Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ mm. is the front, center, middle, east, west, up, down. That's everything holds together in, in Christ. Uh, he is before mm. all things and um, preeminent over all things. He's ultimately going to talk about Jesus Christ one way, shape or form. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a, you know, such an, that's why we were encouraged, I think, by 117, by, by that verse, because actually as an organization inspired by faith, you know, we recognize the outwards of our faith is, is based on Christ. Our, our, through this rocky period, through this tough period, actually, you know, we've relied on Christ. We've looked to Christ as kind of that solid rock. And you kind of, you get that, don't you, from Paul's writings. Uh, he, he looks to, you know, you, you see that, um, <laughs> that foundation figure almost, don't you, sometimes, uh, as you kind of read his writings. Or do you, do you get that when you read what Paul writes. Yeah, I think that's right. I'm, um, you know, Paul, when he uses the word foundation, he uses it in relation to Jesus. There is mm. no other foundation upon whom we may build except Jesus Christ. You know, mm. this is um, in the Corinthians, first Corinthians. Um, and actually that is one of the most difficult lessons to learn when yeah. reading Paul's letters. And a lot of new Testament scholars seem to forget that or sideline that and make something mm. else central to Paul, whether it be, to be a little bit con you know, controversial, maybe justification by faith, or or maybe it'll be um, a certain way of doing church, or maybe it's something we do. No, mm. it's Jesus is the mm. foundation. And if we build on anything other than who God has shown himself to be in Jesus Christ, we're going to ultimately be building on sand. And that's mm. that's the greatest lesson, I think, to, uh, to learn when engaging Paul at the start. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And so, you know... To summarise then with that, with kind of what we've just spoke about there is, you know, what would be the, the, the summary message of what do you think Paul's, because as you said, different theologians might have different opinions of what uh, the message of Paul is about, uh, what, what his message was rather. Um, what have you kind of garnered and gathered from <laughs> your understanding you know, of your your writing that you've done already uh, of kind of if you could kind of crystallize it for us here on 17 like this is like this is the message of what paul was putting the gospel message he was putting across what, what, what would that yeah. be yeah um well when I, I when i wrote my book um paul's divine christology my, my goal was to show that jesus for paul is god you know mm -hmm. so when we're speaking about jesus we see who god is and what god is like that mm -hmm. um uh, while we were still sinners, you know, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So in yeah. what Christ is doing, we see the revelation of God. Um, and what we see, I suppose, as the heart of the gospel is a wonderful, liberating message of kindness and benevolence and love. God in love sends Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who takes on what we are, assumes our Adamic nature to use academic speak. Um, he and and then he terminates that terminates on the cross, um, and uh, and then God raises Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the key for understanding Paul is that story of descent. You know, God sends Jesus, dies on the cross, and ascent, resurrection. That story is our story. It's your story, Matt. It's everybody is listening mm. to this. It's my story. My death is Christ's death. So we yeah. believe that one died, therefore all died, says Paul in Second Corinthians chapter five. Mm. Not we believe one died because uh, because all died, but rather we believe one died, therefore all died, and we are resurrected in Christ. So that story of the death and resurrection of Jesus, liberations from the power of sin and death, it's all about our participation in the story of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. That, in a nutshell, is the heart of Paul's theology. Amazing, amazing. That 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 clip in itself is worth uh, a weight in gold on Instagram and other things. We'll clip that two minutes. There you go. Uh, Chris, <laughs> thank you so much. And, and you know, I, I think um for so many of us, you know, we can draw so much inspiration, can't we? It's lovely to see in the comments as well. Uh Diane Robinson just sort of reflecting what, what some of her favorite writings in scripture is, of course, of Paul's as well. Uh, and you know, for, for you, Chris, you know from where, where have you seen as well you know uh from paul's writings this idea of justice here obviously at all we can uh those that maybe join us for the first time across this <laughs> video all we can being uh, inspired by faith um 
movement that seeks to see every person's potential fulfilled through its partners uh, overseas as well. You know, and this idea of justice is at, at the heart of who all we can is. Um, you know, where did you where do you see that played out in what Paul writes? You know, in regards to justice, where does Paul? Yeah in particularly kind of talk about justice issues, because obviously uh, that's at the heart of who we are as an organisation or we can. So where do you see it played out in Paul as well in his life? Well, I think it's not just at the heart of what you're doing. It's at the heart of Paul's understanding as well of the gospel itself. Mm. It's not, You don't have the gospel over here and then yeah. the practical outworking of it over here, which is justice. Mm. Paul says that in the gospel, the, the justice of God is revealed. Um, so the word, the word righteousness or justification, or justice, they all translate the same Greek word, which is the kaiusini. And, mm. and so Romans 1, and I think it was Diana said, Romans is her favourite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I met her. Um, yeah, right, Romans 1, 16 and 17. Have a look at those verses later on. But we're told that justice is revealed in the gospel. So mm. what do we know what justice is? How do we know what it means? We look at Jesus for Paul. And this is really important because lots of different people have various understandings of what justice might mean. You know, there's retributive notions, distributive notions of justice. There's this, there's this reader, right, on on Sandal by Michael Sandal. Um, and he's, he's I think he lists, is it seven or nine? I forget. But seven or nine different definitions of justice. Yeah. And, and wow. so you can, you can go in any kind of different direction. Some will see justice as somebody getting punished, right, for the sins that they have committed. Others mm. will see justice in the equal distribution of goods. Others will see justice in the equal outcome of, of uh, selection and so on. But for Paul, it's crucial, I think, to see justice as Jesus Christ himself, who brings yeah. peace and order kindness and grace and reveals that God actually likes us. God is for us and has been from before all eternity. And then this works out for Paul in a number of different ways in community. Yeah, definitely. Uh, is it is there some of those communities that um that particularly that uh, come to mind when you talk about when that justice being outworked? Um is there communities that come to mind then that you kind of have, have understood that it kind of came to be um just to kind of expand that a little bit more those communities in particular Paul uh, would go to and travel to and be present in? Yeah. Um, well, with Paul, you know, he's wrestling with a, a set of questions and a circumstances that are, that, that are different from our own. They overlap, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's take Galatia uh, mm. as an instance. A bunch of churches in Galatia. And, and one of the things that he wanted to make clear to this variety of different people in this community is that in Christ Jesus, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male and female. Mm -hmm. So all of these really important and significant ways of identifying people and putting them in their place is relativized by the fact that what matters is Jesus. Um, yeah. And we see, of course, this is, this is echoed again in Colossians. Now, to what extent this led to a social program is a matter of debate amongst scholars, particularly when you're looking at Philemon and what does Paul think about slavery in particular and how does that all pan out. But the point is that the theological structure is there, that yeah. in Jesus Christ, these things will be broken down in terms of um, uh, uh, power and oppression, um, that in, in Jesus Christ, things are made new, there's new creation, and it is one in which everything is liberated. Um, so much more could be said about that. But that would be a, an example from, from the ancient world. Um, yeah. But I think the church has picked up, at its best moments, picked up this banner and, mm. and ran with this, as, as you guys are, um, uh, which is wonderful to see and humbling to see. Amazing. Thank you. And, and I think not to change track completely, but I think to carry on the kind of conversation about Paul just for a moment, you know, for, for those that are kind of doing you know, tuning into this and kind of uh, wanting to know more, wanting to expand more, wanting to expand their knowledge more, their horizon <laughs> more, uh, and actually kind of looking up what sources can I go to? Where can I go to uh, right now to kind of understand where did you first go? Um, what writings got you inspired by Paul? Obviously, apart from the writings themselves, but, you know, uh, what scholars, what thinkers, what uh, contributors uh, kind of got you inspired that, that you would recommend others go to? Oh, well, it's my biography, you see, and what interested me at the start of my journey 
may mm. not be what I would recommend people read now. Um, okay. Yeah. But um, I would say Richard Borkham's works got me um, hooked on on the question of God in Christ. He didn't do yeah. much with Paul, honestly. He did a little. He looked at Philippians 2 and the Philippians hymn. He looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6, a little bit, you know. Yeah. But, but I learned from Richard Borkham a tremendous integrity of engaging with the text. Okay. Um, and I got excited about exegesis. But yeah. these days, I mean, I still, I, anybody, we've got so much to learn from someone as brilliant and as learned as Richard Borkham. Mm. But I, I really enjoy, in terms of a primer on Paul, I think probably the best one out there for someone who hasn't had that much engagement with high-level scholarship yeah. is Douglas Campbell's book, um, Paul and Apostle's Journey. It's, um, it's, it's more of a narration of Paul's journey, um, but yeah. gets into some of the the things that really make Paul tick and I think it's a brilliant book amazing fantastic and what and you know, obviously we recommend other people's books but you've also uh, written a, you know, a number of different things and uh, and you mentioned about your book just <coughs> ago, but let's just you know go circle back to that uh, tell us a little bit about the book that you wrote and and whether people and how people can you know get involved with that as well tell us a little bit about that oh man well you're very gracious to draw attention to my stuff um well there's Paul's Divine Christology which was, it's an academic piece of work. I'm, I'm showing why Paul thinks Jesus is God and, and, um, and how Paul does that. And there's some surprising twists to that argument. It was a lot of fun to write. I felt as though that was a, a gift to write that. Um, mm. There's beyond old and new perspectives on Paul where I'm looking at what are called old perspective and new perspective readings of the Apostle Paul and justification and faith language. Um, yeah. This was an edited volume. Then I co-authored another book um, with Mike Bird and um, Simon Gathercole and a, and a couple of others. Um, it's uh, called um, How God Became Jesus. It was a response book to something that Bart Ehrman had written. Um, but it was, it was a lot of fun writing that, essentially putting Jesus Christ at the center of all, all again. A yeah. couple of things in the pipeline. I'm editing a TNT Clark companion on Christology and writing the new NICNT commentary on Second Corinthians, which I'm, I'm I'm struggling with and enjoying in equal measure, it's um, it's a huge project. It's um, it's going to be near three hundred thousand words, and it's it's wow. um, it's a huge task, and I feel I've I've overcommitted. But it's a joy to spend time with Paul in the text and have my nose yeah. in the text. Amazing, amazing. Is it's a is there a sneak peek? Um, you know, as you're writing something that you can uh, say that's inspired you. Maybe something that you've 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 written most recently not to kind of dive obviously you won't be able to divulge everything in, in a whole commentary series that you'll you share <laughs> anyway um because for a thousand words will be here till next uh year with the 117 series but is there something that's topical right on your that's fresh on your mind that you've been kind of wrestling with sharing with that you know actually uh you might want to share with us now those watching <coughs> i've just come out of a, of a class um, looking at uh, ways of understanding Paul's letters and particularly Romans. And, and I suppose, I mean, I've already said it really, but this, mm. this is a lesson that's sometimes difficult to learn. Um, the key to reading and understanding Paul is, this is it. If we are led to a greater appreciation of the unconditional love of God, revealed in Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit, then we're probably getting Paul right. Yeah, you see, There's a lot of different ways of understanding Paul. A lot of different scholars say different things. And the mm. thing is, many different ways of reading Paul, whether we're, we're reading an academic tome or whether we're reading through Romans chapter 2, if we're not drawn to the unconditional love of God revealed in Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit, to put it negatively, something's probably gone pear-shaped to use mm. theological terminology you know uh, something's gone wrong and okay. um and that that's the biggest key uh the, the, the Karl Barth um wrote this very important commentary on Romans mm. um the turn of the previous uh, century uh, 19 18 19 and uh and he wrote that commentary with a joyful sense of discovery yeah and um yeah. There's a set, you know, if we can read Paul with a joyful sense of discovery, not expecting that we understand everything that's in there or assuming no. that what we think about faith and justification and repentance and sin, that, that that's what Paul meant, but rather with that teachable 
delighted sense of discovery that puts Jesus at the front, um, yeah. then we've got we've got so much more to mine from his letters. That's amazing. That's such a delightful uh, that uh, yeah, we can delight in that as well. We want to echo those, you know, joyful sense of discovery. And yeah. I think we should be uh, we're all on that journey, aren't we, Chris? Yeah, yeah, we're all on that journey. We want to encourage everyone watching here live or we watching on replay as well on that journey for yourselves too. That here at 117, we've been on this journey of discovery ourselves of how we hold together, how we um understand the current times that we live in. Uh, and how we can best show God's love yeah. uh, both in this country, but also around the world, some of those poorest in communities as well. We've seen that in action as well. But may we better understand God's unconditional love for each one of us today. That's yeah. a, a real prayer. I think we can begin to close on that one, I think, Chris, as well. Uh, and just want to thank you so much for your time. There's lots I think we could definitely talk about, uh, even more so at, at real length as well. But hopefully we'll get back get back get you back on here as well um, nice, and so we can share a little bit more about paul and and um, continue to be inspired like we have been here at 117 as well and, and just want to wish you all the best in your role at <laughs> nice. I know we haven't really touched Thank upon you. that uh, as well but uh, tell us a little you know, uh, you know just before you go uh, we might you know just to kind of highlight that role that you you have at saint Melitis. how has it been going being uh, in higher education of course you know we we, we read and we understand obviously the, the, the difficulty students are having across the yeah. UK at the moment. Uh, How has it been for you being a, a lecturer at this time, being in that kind of position to those students at St. Melitis yeah. in London? It's been, it's un, unquestionably, it's been a challenge. At St. Melitis, we have the infrastructure to to deal with the changes, thankfully, and we're, we're doing okay in that. But um, but we've had to rethink a lot. We, we've had to rewrite lectures that we've, you know, I've been delivering for 13 years and I've had to reshape how they're delivered online. And so it's been an awful lot of work. There's there's no hiding that. And and because we have so many students, you know, it's it's over 600, I think. Yeah. Um, we, we, we really have a lot of work to do to make sure that all of the students feel happy with, with um, their education, that they're challenged, um, sufficiently even though we're not meeting face to face that formation can take part all of that's a challenge and we'd really appreciate your prayers that the people of god are served um, and not just us of course all of the colleges we're all in this together um yeah. whether it be anglican baptist whatever else um pray for all of us in in theological education that um the beauty of god the beauty of the gospel captivates his people um, yeah. through what we do amen definitely we will continue to hold uh, saint melitus we pray for your work of course as well we thank you for just coming on and, and bring you back to what you said before you know may we continue to have a joyful sense of discovery uh, on life's journey but also as we grapple with uh, god's living word as well and uh, see his unconditional love that he has for each one of you watching today as well may you know that as well and we'd love you to end. I'm going to play uh, us out today uh, on a covenant prayer that was um, put together for the covenant uh, service that happened yesterday over on the Methodist Church's YouTube channel in partnership with All We Can. Uh, and you're going to see some familiar faces from around the Methodist Church and the All We Can family and movement that we share in this covenant prayer. Be uh, encouraged maybe to say that prayer for yourself today after hearing what Chris has said as well as we recommit ourselves uh, on life's journey with Christ as well. And after that, uh, a short little plug as well before our Lent devotional, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, uh, our Lent devotional pages are begin to go live, which is really exciting here at All We Can. And you can journey with the All We Can movement this Lent, this year in particular, as we look at the theme, Change Begins. And you can already download your copy of that Lent devotional and also sign up for regular emails as well. But let's finish, Chris, uh, with the covenant prayer. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for watching Pleasure. today uh, at 117. And I'll see you very soon. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank, rank, rank me within, within you. Will. you will. Put me to doing. Put, Put me, me to, to suffering. suffering. Let me be employed for you. Or laid aside for you. Exalted for you. Or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let, Let me, me have all things. things. Let, Let me, me have, have nothing. nothing. 
I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now now may not be be ratified. Amen. Amen. This Lent, join the All We Can movement and be a part of making change happen for families and communities around the world and not forgetting your own journey with God. Over the course of Lent, you can make use of the amazing prayer materials, excellent Bible reflections from a range of contributors and inspiring stories and service outlines and engaging content for all the family. We encourage you to head on over to allwecan.org.uk forward slash Lent to order or download your very own devotional today. Come join us and see how change begins this Lent.